Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another day of distance learning. And as always, we're going to start with discipleship time grounded in God's Word. At the end of today's uh, discipleship time, we're going to share a couple of video clips uh, from our students' favorite uh, Bible stories. Looking forward to that. All right, but first, let's talk about our identity, our purpose, and action. Who are we? We're children of God, loved and saved by Jesus. What is our purpose? To make God known through serving leadership. And how do we do this? We love God and we love others. As you all know, we've been working through the big picture and uh, the big picture of God's immeasurable love for us in Jesus Christ. Uh, last time we talked about the judges. Now we talk about the rise of the kings. What do I mean by that? Well, Israel didn't have a king uh, like the other nations. They had God as their king and ruler and shepherd, right? But the people, after all these years of doing things in their own eyes, felt like they needed a leader. And they looked to other nations instead of the Lord for guidance. And they said, we want a king like the other nations. Even though uh, the Lord didn't necessarily think this was a good idea because he was being their king and their, their leader, um, he provided what they wanted. He gave them a king. And they chose King Saul. Saul stands for... Um, somewhat of an underperforming leader. Um, and he just didn't get it done. Uh, he was a tall, dark, and handsome man, but he was all about himself. And eventually he uh, uh, gets into all sorts of trouble uh, to the point where God turns away from Saul and provides Israel with a better king. But this king is anointed when he's a, a child, a young boy, shepherd boy that is and you probably remember his name as David so let me tell you the story about David David uh, shows up on the battle line and his brothers are at battle with the Philistines you might remember them from the Samson story and they've got some pretty big characters on their side they have Goliath uh, weighing in or at least uh, measuring in at nine feet tall um, the tip of his spearhead was 15 pounds. Think about that. Go weigh a, a barbell of 15 pounds. That was the tip of his spearhead. And he was trained to fight since he was a child. No one in Israel wanted to fight uh, Goliath because they were doing this representational combat thing where one-on-one -on -one combat equals whoever wins, the whole army wins, and whoever loses, everyone goes into slavery. So when David shows up with lunch for his brothers, he hears Goliath yelling at the Israelites and cursing God. David's response is what everyone's response should be. Why are we letting this person curse our God? That's not right. And uh, while King Saul is hiding in his tent, David says, let me at him. I'll take care of him just like I take care of bears and lions when they come after my sheep. Remember our shepherd story? So... Eventually, by God's grace, Saul says, okay, David, take care of Goliath. He gives him his armor. David says, I don't need the armor. I'll do it the old-fashioned way, the way God has protected me in the past from the bear and from the lion. I'll take my slingshot. Now, pause. Boys and girls, I could probably ask any group of people across the nation how David killed Goliath, and they would tell me the what or the how he did it with the slingshot. But can you tell me why he did it? Because really, that's really the most important part of this story. David actually does tell Goliath, if you read the, the text, why he's going to destroy Goliath. He says, I'm going to kill Goliath because I am going to make God known to the ends of the earth. He wanted to make God known to all people. And he wanted the Israelites, God's people, to know that God doesn't win with swords and spears. Okay, our God wins by his power and his grace. He's not using the same means that we might think of. Maybe it's money or maybe it's power. Maybe it's intelligence. Um, God uses his love and his mercy. And sometimes he uses the weaker things to conquer the bigger things. You see, David didn't see himself as an underdog. He saw Goliath as the underdog because he knew that Goliath was fighting God. God had made a promise to Israel, and he wasn't going to let it go. He was going to bring his Savior through Israel, and he was going to protect his people and his promise. And so with that confidence and faith, David has courage to go after Goliath. He swings his uh, uh, rock or stone, hits Goliath in the forehead, knocks him down, and ends him with his own sword. 
And that's the story. But I want you to think about this. God didn't need Goliath, or God didn't need David, that is, to kill Goliath. God could have just sneezed and killed Goliath. So why is God allowing the shepherd boy to go against this trained nine-foot killer? Well, he's preparing David for what David's going to do. You see, David's going to be the king of Israel after Saul's gone. And he's preparing David for that position. You know, sometimes God allows us to face some pretty big giants in our lives because he's preparing us for something um, that we need to do. And he's helping complete the people we are in our faith. Well, David got off to a good start, but he, like all of us, had bad days too and did bad things. Um, and we're not going to go into all of them during the big picture here, but I want you to know that uh, as he got older, uh, God gave him a promise, and it's a really important promise for the big picture. He said, when your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. There God is telling us, okay, the promised one was going to come from Eve, and then Abraham, and then Israel, and then Judah, and now from David. You see, David's part of the tribe of Judah. And so now we know that the Savior of the world is going to be a son of David, and that's going to be a really important part of the big picture. Uh, David was the second king of Israel. You're going to hear about some other kings of Israel. None of them were good enough. We needed a real king in Jesus uh, to save us from sin, death, and the devil. But through David, God kept his promise and protected his people. And that's the story today. All right, today we got a special treat. We're going to move on. Uh, we've got uh, some pictures from those of you who did some puzzles. Thanks for sharing those. And uh, a couple announcements. Uh, Distance Grandparents and a Special Friends Day will be celebrated on Friday the 24th. Uh, that's next week. Um, more announcements are going out, so please look for details on that. We're still going to celebrate those special people in our lives, but it's going to look a little bit different this year. That's okay. Uh, also, Creative Time. Remember, we're creating videos of our favorite Bible stories. And right now, I'd like to share, you, uh, share with you two of those uh, videos. Thanks for sharing. I hope you all continue to create. Um, I'll just say this. Uh, to my knowledge, no animals were hurt or harmed in the filming of these uh, videos. And um, when you see miracles, just understand that these are trained uh, stuntsmen, uh, stunt people. Uh, so please don't try this at home by yourself. All right. The first one up is from Sophie. Great job, Sophie. Uh, this one is the Good Samaritan. going to Jericho. Who's attacked by robbers? Ah, give us your money! Ah, give us your heart! A Samaritan passed that way, saw the man, and took pity on him. He bandaged him, and picked him up, and headed toward the inn. The Samaritan paid the innkeeper to look after him. Then Jesus. 
Jesus asked which of these three was a good neighbor. The one who had mercy on him. Jesus said, go and do likewise. Great job. That was awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, one last one. Okay, well, like like I said before, uh, have fun, be creative, and uh, give us your favorite Bible story. Um, I'll just say, if you're calling about doctrinal review on that last one or any kind of accreditation issues, uh, please contact Charlie Charger. He was the producer, editor, director, uh, everything else of that film. Anyways, uh, let's close with uh, our morning prayer and begin our day. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you, for into your hands I commend my, myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, and that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a great day in the Lord, everyone. Take care.